right, so I have a lot of great stuff for us here today, to be completely, awesome. uh, to be completely honest with you. I got uh, some questions. I got like one or two that I know is like right up your alley. Um, <laughs> so, got some cool stuff. All right, uh, I'm going to pop the intro and, and go there, so... Welcome to Feathers and Friends, where in true absolute fashion I am doing this the night before everything. And what's really interesting uh, is Gaio and I were wearing the same clothes that we wore last night when I was on his podcast. So, you know, we're we're doing great. We're doing great. Gaio, how are you feeling the, from 24 hours ago? I am doing phenomenal. I'm, uh, let's see, uh, I need to work on my sobriety, but other than that, I'm not sleepy and I'm not uh, hungry. So sober is the only thing I got going on right now. Uh, sober as in like drinking alcohol or, or the... oh, uh, cannabis because I, I don't do alcohol. I okay. rarely do alcohol. Why, why do you got to normally... work in? Oh, sorry. Again? No, go oh, ahead. No, well, so normally whenever like, a, a um, what is it? Cashier asks me, Hey, you know, how are you doing today? Blah, blah, blah. You know, just being their, their job. I just tell them, Oh yeah, I'm sleepy, sober and hungry. And then they just kind of like pause for a second. So I'm not sleepy and I'm not, so and I'm not hungry. So I'm just sober. Is that an Amazon Basics boom mic that you got on your thing? No, this is a Gator Frameworks mm. mic. It looks very similar to the Amazon Basics that is hanging out right in my uh, right in my. Uh, mm. That's the dirty clothes pile. Probably shouldn't be in there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's my life right now. My life right now is a little bit of a disaster. Friday sucked. Friday sucked a lot of dick. I'm not gonna lie. It was, Friday? It was Yeah, today was Friday. Okay. It was a, it was a it was a bad juju day. It was very bad. I uh, um, people don't know how to say no, in in the sense of it. So if someone and this was this is this is not part of what I wanted to talk about. I've got uh, uh, we'll call it eight tabs open, but this is not part of that. I wanted to ask you. So if someone comes knocks on your door, is talking to you about something you don't want, and it's like it's the weather's bad out there or whatever. Say it's like it's a really cold day for Reno, Nevada. Would you be polite to them and say, oh, take my, own, my information and give me a call for a quote? Or would you tell them, no, thank you? I would say when I open the door, I would just say, no, thank you and, and shut the door. Um, I don't think there's anything that's door to door that I would want. Not Girl Scout cookies, not anything else. So there's no one that I want to hear their spiel about. You don't want Girl Scout cookies? No. What is wrong with you? I only like butter cookies, um, butter and sugar cookies. And I don't okay. think they have those. And it's always like the peanut butter and chocolate. Everything has chocolate now. And there's a, there's a new one. That's uh, chocolate with caramel and sea salt. And it's got a little bit of creme, creme fresh in it. And it looks amazing. I, I still wouldn't do it. Cause I'm just not a fan of like coffee and chocolate are just like, eh, and peanut butter. Like those three, if it has it on there, I'm just not interested. And, you know, rarely can I find anything that has what I like. Oh, speaking of cafe, how did you feel about the Starbucks episode that hopefully I don't get contacted about? <laughs> it was kind of interesting. Um, I knew about the partner stuff because my sister uh, works for Starbucks and she was telling me about all the stuff that she has and some like little hacks that she does too. But I didn't know anything about like the medicine ball uh, drink and all the other stuff. I didn't realize they did other stuff. I thought they only did coffee and iced coffee. I didn't know they had tea. So maybe I'll give them a try. But still, I don't want to spend six dollars for a drink. Yeah, uh, Mr. Starbucks. I forget what I was supposed to call him because I interviewed him like three weeks before that, which was kind of interesting. Uh, he told me to try the drag. I think it was the dragon fruit is what he told me to try. And yeah, I heard about that one. I went to Starbucks like the day. So after I I, I talked to the the really young girl at the very very end there, um, it was interesting because I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to Starbucks and I'm gonna get the dragon fruit and I'm gonna I'm gonna try the the other two that they wanted me to try. I roll up. And Starbucks is like, hey, we're sorry for the inconvenience. Our hours are changed. It's like, ah, oh, no big deal. Whatever. And so I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. And then I look over it. I'm like, they just closed 20 minutes ago. I was like, banana sandwich, motherfucker. And uh, like I looked at their hours and their hours are like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then they're closed the rest of the week. And they're only open for like six hours throughout the, yeah. Like, hmm. I don't know what's going on with this. Uh, oh, wow. That was really loud. Is this turned up really high? Is that what's going on? No, it's set to normal. Okay. I don't know what's going on, but the Omicron variant, the, the Omicron thing is just, mm -hmm. it's, it's tanking stuff. 
Hmm. Like our the hours are weird around here. Well, I mean Reno never sleeps, but you know. Reno does kind of sleep. It's really? just like the strip that doesn't sleep, and even then, it's just like the casinos, and it's it's pretty dead in there anyway. So. Pretty dead. Okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm sorry. I know I went out. I'm I'm good on going off on a tangent, especially when I'm in charge for once and trying to remember I shouldn't talk in the microphone to make it hard for you to edit. <laughs> <laughs> I've remembered oh, no, halfway. Make it hard. All I got to do is stretch it out. Like like I said for for like last night. I mean, I knocked it out uh, right after we got done mm-hmm. recording. I edit edited the episode and all i had to do was i chopped out some parts um because it was just audio so the video didn't work for me anyway so yeah i yeah i remember it halfway through i was like oh i have to shut up in the middle of his stuff i I remember i remember it's i try i try i'm sorry all right um so i have you ever seen a taxidermy crocodile eating a pig no I've seen no. a taxidermy crocodile and I've seen a taxidermy pig, but never one eating the other. So I, I was on Reddit today because, I, like I said, today really sucked. Today was really – you got your phone by you? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna mess with this this last time. I'm not going to be weird like that. But I'm sending you a link to the uh, crocodile who was eating a, a pig. It is one of the coolest taxidermiest things I have ever found in my life. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, today sucked really, really bad. It started off horrible and it just got worse and worse and worse. But I found this dude who's got like, what looks like a 10 foot crocodile chomping on a pig's belly, uh, as a taxidermy thing, just in the side of his house. Yeah, it's, uh, int- it is interesting, but it's more of a piglet than a pig. Okay. It's like a, it looks like a, uh, little boar. Uh, maybe a two-year-old, one-year-old. But like, how much do you think that cost? <sighs> like, first you gotta get the gator, then mm-hmm. you gotta get the piglet, then you gotta take it to some dude and be like, "Yo, <clears throat> you're not gonna believe my idea, but I want this on a log." Like, it looks like he's got a whole system there, you know? It does. I. Hmm. Like, you know what? I, I'm gonna... I mean, there's a lot going on. I, I like the fireplace. I mean, it's a good place for it. I don't see anywhere else. I mean, I don't know what his house looks like or her. Does it specify if it's he or she? It didn't really specify. All it specified was, hey, look, this is pretty dope. <laughs> so, like, yeah. There we oh, go. That's, and that's, I like that horse in the, the horse painting on the side. At first glance, I thought it was like the side of a mountain. Yeah, that horse painting is, is like, I like those. Uh, is that like an oil canvas or something like that? could be because maybe it's just a print don't they do that a lot with don't they do that a lot with oils where it kind of blends in with everything Mm. yeah i don't know i just a little thing of succulents next to it he's got a photo reflector up on top of the top of the mantle of the fireplace so then he's got a little looks like a coon dog that's got to be a rot that's got to be a rottweiler Mm, the, the snout is too pointy for a rot it's got the rot coloring yeah but yeah I, don't know, I just thought that was super. I, oh my god, is that a baby car seat at the bottom right there by the Rottweiler? I gotta bring this back over so everyone can see what we're talking about. Is that a no, baby? No, no, no. I, I think that's one of those like calf massagers, like where you put your feet in. Oh, it's got okay. two slots in it there. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 just ridiculous. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, I just thought that was one of the cool things I found on Reddit, but. Uh, so a, a gentleman here, because like I said, this is like right up your alley. This is some Dayton stuff. Okay. Uh, so uh, Jolly Grape three four four three is asking, "Am I overthinking this, or, or is it a deal breaker? Uh, starting to starting dating, but have caught some things that bother me. She readily throws out how she can drop me in a minute. In a minute, mentions all her guy friends that have tried to hit on her, and replies back after hours to me compared to when she talks. Uh, you know, in seconds." I don't care uh, that she has male friends, but she doesn't want to tell any of her, her friends that she's dating. She also told me that she's had a threesome and a high body count, all men. I don't mind, but I mentioned to her how I feel like, a pr- how I don't feel like a priority and the body count threw me off because I don't know how I would measure up. Uh, instead of answering me, she got all mad about the body count and I told her I don't mind it and he just kind of addresses some other dumb stuff. So, yeah, so she slowly responds. Basically tells them that she okay you have an answer. 
Uh, I mean, in general, it's personally, I just don't care about body count because that doesn't, um, what's the word? It, it doesn't define a person's character. And it also depends also how recently was that, that hot, the, the threesome she had, the mm. high body count she has. I mean, you know, high body count is subjective. That guy might think anything more than 10 is, is high. And, you know, for me, 10 is like, okay, that's kind of average or low, or I don't even really care unless, unless she starts hitting like 300 plus, then I'm like, okay, I might even be cons not even concerned. It's like, okay, maybe she knows how to do something. I don't know. It's just, like my perspective is is skewed because of my background. So, yeah. Um, I mean, the body count to me, it it kind of depends because, like, if you're right, if like you're 18 and you've had like 20 people, it's like, no, um, okay, you know, like, all right, like I I under been adventurous, good, good on you. But I mean, like, if you're 30 and you've had like 20 people, it's like, okay, you're you're going a little slow. Like, it, it really depends on a lot of things. But like, dude. The fact that you had to mention everything to make sure that you're okay with it tells me that you're not. Mm -hmm. The fact that you've mentioned it tells me you're not. And I'm not going to I, I remember you were talking to me last night about how I don't, I don't, like, I'll, I'll tippy toe over where my boundaries is. And that's one of my boundaries. If it takes you, like, an hour and a half to respond to me all the time and I'm constantly having to wait for you to respond to me, there's a very high likelihood that I mean you're on the you're on my back burner just like you're on I'm on yours. If you're not putting forth much effort, I'm not gonna put forth much effort too. And eventually, I'm just gonna stop text messaging you. That's just how it goes. Um, so you're not on her forefront. A lot of those do bother you, and you need to uh, tell her to go jog on. Yeah, um, I, I'll try to do not the right thing, but I try to at least let them know that why I'm ghosting them or why I'm just going to cut them off, you know, because sometimes I'll come back like, oh, well, why'd you stop talking to me? Or they'd randomly, you know, reach out and say, hey, whatever happened, why did we stop talking? So I realized, hey, th this is kind of a pattern that, okay, yeah, I've been ghosting them for whatever reason. And sometimes I would message them and tell them why. And I'd find out a week or two later that my message didn't go through. And then they were wondering, why did I ghost them? Hmm. And so I had to explain, oh shit, I meant to send you this message a week ago. It just didn't go through. I didn't pay attention. So now I get better at making sure the message goes through and I don't care if it gets delivered or read. I just like send them, Hey, I'm not talking to you because of X, Y, or Z. That's, um, that's a lot. That's, that's, that's nicer than many people actually do, to be honest with you. A lot of people just ghost and they don't care. They could care mm -hmm. less. So I, uh, I've, I've, I've done my fair bit of ghosting before. It's kind of, it's fun and it's easy because like a lot of people are like, hey, whatever happened? And it's just like, um, don't you remember how you like never texted me? And they're like, no, I talked to you all the time. It's like, no, no, you didn't. I don't, I don't count two or three text messages a day at a conversation. Like that's a that's a blip. But this, this is a good one. I know this is OK, good. I'm still recording. Thank God. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I like the dual screen setup, but sometimes it, it like. The, the, it blocks me and I'm like, oh my, oh, I'm recording. Okay. So, uh, I bled on his sheets during sex. Um, last night I went to a guy's house. I, I've been seen for a while. I wouldn't say that we're dating, but I would like to be. We obviously were having sex and I, I looked down to see something dark and it, and to my shock, it was my blood literally everywhere. No idea why. Uh, so I was really shocked. Uh, it was super embarrassing. I feel bad. There's blood everywhere and his sheets were definitely destroyed. He was really chill about it, but of course it was kind of a mood killer. What should I do? I mean, she can't do anything now other than offer to either replace them or wash them for him or try to wash them for him. Um, I mean, it was at his place. So I'm, I'm guessing maybe just replacing them would be easier than to like, Hey, can I take these sheets and then wash them? Cause who knows that guy might, that might be his only pair of sheets anyways. So, I mean, a lot of times guys, depending on their age, don't think about getting more than one set of sheets until maybe their twenties or thirties or late thirties, you know, late twenties, early thirties. Everything that you see on my bed right now, the black, uh, cause I, I have the, I have a black comforter and then I have mm -hmm. this really nice comforter and then this under sheet. That's it. One of those goes down. I'm I I'm doing laundry. <laughs> I know it's bad. <laughs> I know it's bad. I know. Um, you you would have liked you would have liked Veronica. Veronica, um, she was younger than I was. I think she was 24, and I was like 29. I want to say, mm -hmm. and 
she like i would have married this girl like I, I think there was a mistake there was one mistake that i think i made and it really rocked the relationship down the road which i in in hindsight in hindsight i sh i should have done what i originally wanted to do but i didn't want to burden her with it uh and that's a really dark tale that i don't want to go down um that's maybe for another episode, but it was really funny because like, she's like, you need a better bed. That's why I have the queen size now. She's like, you need this, you need that. And like everything that she, like, she upgraded me from very single bachelor to like my butt. Cause a buddy of mine moved in with me for a little bit. He was like, dude, you got a nice place. I was like, that's because of her, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I was like, dude, my place was like garbage before you moved in that couch that you're sleeping on right now. Yeah. That one there. <laughs> well, okay. It wasn't as good. <laughs> so like, yeah, she like, she upgraded me hardcore. So she was, she was also, good. I, I mean, I know you don't have much room, but one, one thing to keep in mind is, um, if I can show you or show the viewers, whoever's happened to be watching. So say this is your room, however the orientation is, wherever the door is, never put your bed all in one corner. You want to have it to where there's sides or no, well, that's not, hang on. There we go. <laughs> this will probably be better. So you want to have it where you have room on either side, regardless of where your door is. You never want it against a wall. Why? You know, like in the corner, because it doesn't seem inviting. It seems like you're a 12 year old versus being an adult where you could have a nightstand on either side so it seems inviting so that way she thinks oh hey there's room for me in this place versus like oh this is just some smash pad which i get it it probably is but at the same time if you want a relationship you got to make your place inviting and homey for them to do so because your relationship isn't going to be a hundred percent sex it's going to be five to ten percent sex and then other shit involved you are literally in my bedroom right now. You know that, right? This oh, yeah, I mean, is I my... see you don't have that much room there. Like all you have is there. Yeah, I have I, I like like what you see like yeah, like every like what's in frame right now is the extra room that I have. And if I move it like centered, I have literally nowhere to put the TV and everything else like that. Like I mean I could maybe put it up here, but like if I don't have it tucked into my in the into the corner of my room, I have like no, I have like no room. Like, I, I mean, I could turn it sideways and push it up against the wall back there, you know, and it almost takes up that entire, it takes up basically the entire width of this, but like, yeah, like trying to figure out how to, like, my mom got, oh my God, I invited my mom into my life for a little bit, and she's just like, how is my son living like this? And I was like, mom, I'm 34, single, I've never had a serious girlfriend, like, what do you kind of expect, you know? I don't, I don't live, I don't have a girlfriend long enough to upgrade. And then the moment I let her in, I, like, I kid you not, like I let her in just a tiny, tiny bit. And like, it was text messages daily about stuff that she could do to my apartment. And I'm like, I love you to death, mom. I do, but you need to shut up. Like immediately, <laughs> like stop texting me. <laughs> oh man. She's trying to help you. I think, I think the thing is, I don't know. Cause I mean, a, a lot of moms are like this. I would, I'm going to assume your mother's like this is that she wants grandbabies, you know, like more than just one. So who knows? So she's I, trying to help you get into a relationship that lasts so that you could have that or she could have that. Cause it's, I, I think it's more uh, for her. That was a real bad day when I told her I had a vasectomy. <laughs> oh, she, <laughs> it like, it was funny because mom's like, oh, what did you do last last week? And I was like, oh, I, I, I kind of like, she's like, what have you been doing this last month? And I was like, I oh, just kind of resting up, blah, 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 blah. And then she's like, oh, how you been feeling? I was like, ah, oh, a little sore. She's like, why? I was like, oh, yeah, I had a vasectomy. And she's like, you did what? I was like, oh, that's right. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> My stepdad, of course, gave me a high five, but she didn't, she wasn't too happy about that. It's like, she's like, you're how old? I think I was like 30 when I got it, 29 or 30. She's like, you're 30 years old and you got a vasectomy. I was like, yeah. I know what I want in life, mom. <laughs> so, wow, that was uh, that was a tangent right there. That was that was a tangent. I know, right? I was like, I caught myself. I'm, wow, I apologize. You you can't just let me do that, Guile. You, this like, is your show. You do whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, that's why a lot of people like me to give in. That's that's why the ex Tara listened to me. That's why, and I don't even fuck. I'm saying her goddamn name. 
Um, yeah, like I don't get like that's half the reason why people liked it is I, the tangents I would. But then again, it was just my dumb ass sitting there talking. Yeah, that can be slow and annoying, or, or at least you get self conscious about it. Like, why would anybody want to listen to this? But you're getting some reactions make, makes it easier to talk. Did you say ex Tara? Tara. Tara. Oh, yeah, Tara. Tara. Oh, Tara. my Tara. ex Tara. My. Okay, get it. What? Why? I, I thought her name was ex Tara. I'm like, man, that is that is a very yeah like, 80s name. I was because I was thinking Thundar the Barbarian. I was like, oh man, like just some crazy ass 80s name, ex Tara. No, it's just like Elon Musk. My kid. ex Tara. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, did have you heard how they pronounce Elon Musk kid's name? I didn't know he had kids. So. Yeah, he, he's got a kid. It's like that AE symbol X-12 or some bullshit crazy like that. Okay. Yeah, I would highly encourage you guys. Like, if you don't know about Elon Musk's kid, just, like, Google it. It's it's just like uh, 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 Kanye, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West's child. He changed his name? Or did uh, he pulled a prince? There was an article I found. I was reading it last night, and it was this by... This is why I don't do the news. This is why I don't pay attention, because people... <laughs> consider the craziest things newsworthy well i forget what it was about to be completely honest with you whoa god i forgot about that where was it i saved it for a reason it was cbs though i think i accidentally deleted it but it was cbs cbs was like the artist formerly known as kanye the the rapper formerly known as kanye and i thought that was kind of interesting so i sent you a reply to a comment that i put out on put on reddit if you want to oh shit we're live or we're recording so i guess you'll bring this up oh i, I can bring it up on my phone i'm not yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Not... <coughs> god damn it why want to go Don't away die. i'm not reading that that's too much for right now a tldr it but give me the tldr um basically a guy was asking um how is it that i keep women in line do you think Jack Murphy has damaged the red pill? What the fuck? Oh, the, the okay. So yeah, the the original post was something about like the red pill in general and all this other stuff and how there's guys in the red pill manosphere that are um, essentially faking the funk or you know pretending to be really masculine and selling or be, basically charlatans trying to sell books and courses and stuff and um, mm. coaching sessions. Oh, those guys. And, and then they're like, you know, how do we know who's real and who's good? And I said, well, you're really wasting your time. What you should do is make friends with the Gen X Latino. And because we know how to keep our women in line. And just left it at that. And then a guy was like, oh, hey, well, how do you do that? The Gen X what? Latino. Thank you. I was hoping you'd pronounce it that way again. <laughs> we were, uh, if you want to catch that, uh, what, what's your podcast? Oh, Sucias are my favorite. Uh, S-U-C-I-A-S, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we talked about the red pill and I, of course, in, in perfect fashion, got everything asked backwards as always. So, um, but back to the bleeding on the sheets. Um, mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah, uh, that's where we started. That's where we, that's where we started. <laughs> that's where we started. So we're going to, we're going to bring it back here. Uh, so Veronica, actually, the reason why I mentioned her is because she had a talent that I didn't know, uh, she had until very awkward uh thing happened and i don't, I don't want to go into details uh, on my podcast about it but uh i, I choked i'll just say that I, I choked a little bit and i i regularly did sheets all the time constantly mm -hmm. constantly had to do the sheets and it was funny because the first time she did it and the few women that have done it when when i've successfully made them uh and it was usually a very big surprise to them um they were like oh my god no and i'm like what why no that's perfect i love it congrats like that was perfect i was like huzzah i know i'm doing good you know it's it's a, it's it like it, it's it's a gratif besides mm -hmm. the the gradual volume increase it's like oh i know i'm doing great then you know so i i think that if he was super cool about it you should be super cool about it too because i've had it happen before it, it, it's gonna happen it's this is not the last this is not the first and it's not going to be the last time it ever happens to you unless you become a nun but like if he su don't freak out about it because unless he freaks out about it that's the only thing i'd say if he's like oh 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 cool that he you probably just stroked his ego with that session there to be honest with you yeah but that, that's two distinct things one is bleeding on the sheets the other one's squirting and so the bleeding is like, oh shit, my bad, I'm sorry. And the other one, if he's freaked out, let him know, hey, no, that's a good job. Like, you know, let him know what he doesn't know. 
I that's talking a little bit too much about my love life that I don't want to go into. But that's if, fine. Don't we won't yeah. talk about it. I'm just saying in general. <laughs> you know, because oh, we we're okay. talking about this girl because she bled on the sheets. Yeah, she you just went on a different the tangent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just saying, like, if a woman bleeds in the sheets when I'm making making the sex to her, like that usually tells me that that's a a a, a, a very positive thing has happened. I'm either too big. I'm a little too rough. That's a positive in my eyes. Usually it's that she's like close to her period and you just kind of like broke the dam, but still. Well, I, I made something happen. I made something happen. You made okay. something happen. I yes. made something you, you happen. Brought something happen sooner. I didn't just go, oh, there we go. I'm going to bed. You good? Right. <laughs> uh, we're going to, we're going to skip that one. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Well, no, it's I, it's like a horrible little segue into something. So I just, uh, yeah, okay. So I, I got this. Uh, so I was I was I was. It's weird because I'll br I'll browse through all of Reddit. I'm gonna I'm just gonna call this the Reddit episode because it's it's so random. Um, there's no, there's nothing coherent about this one, but I, I like to browse through the the like popular and are all on Reddit and just see what people come up with. And every once in a while, I get like the. Like this one person is like, you'd never know it, but this was like two years later and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trans. I'm like, if you never told me, I would have never known you were a guy two years earlier. I would have never known that, you know? Like, have you ever seen those trans, the, those transition photos where they're like, oh, I've been on, uh, uh, HRT, I think is it? I don't know. I haven't stumbled across the sub for pre and post trans. Um, well, it's just our trans our trends okay yeah it's just our well, either way like, i still haven't you know um you don't, seen that sub so let me, let me just go take a peek now because now this i intrigued i go like like i scroll for at least like two hours a day from from the most pop I, like i start with the most popular about noon and then i finish mm -hmm. by about 7 p.m but yeah, like it, it's really interesting to see these posts and like all these people are like, like oh I've been on HR uh, hormone regression therapy or or something like that for like the last two years and I'm like that's super dope. Like if you never told me you were a guy to begin with, I would have never told. Uh, well, let me phrase I mean, it. On the it, sub, you would know. Well, yeah. If I looked at the sub, I would have known. But I don't look at the title. I I don't look at the sub. I just look at the little the the, the picture. If it's a picture, oh, because it's all all blended in with the others. Yeah. Okay. Because if it because I hit uh, <laughs> I search by rising or popular for the day and then i just scroll through that for like two hours and yeah it's just kind of interesting but uh too many eggs uh says i just received a bunch of men's clothing and a bible for what? christmas what Sorry, what no what was funny i no it was it wasn't funny it was just kind of um unattractive and it was just going through scrolling through trans um uh, there are some that are just clearly not feminine so like, oh, we're going to talk about that. We're gonna talk <laughs> okay. About, we're going to talk. There's, there's something that I want to talk about with that. Uh, That's fine. But, but too many eggs. It says, I just received a bunch of men's clothing and a Bible for Christmas. Uh, title. I am male to female transition. So you're a girl. Uh, out to them and have been for a while. So it just feels like a slap in the face. They've never done something like this before. And it really hurt me. Um, I don't know if they're seeking advice, just wanting to vent. But uh, I guess because this is Reddit and the Reddit episode, what is your advice to too many eggs? Um, don't read into it. Like if either they did it intentionally or unintentionally um, or they forgot or whatever. So who knows what the reasons are unless you ask them or talk to them. So either let it just roll off the, your, what is it? Roll off your back. Don't worry about Water it. Water off don't a think too about it Because yeah, that one. Um, because, you know, either people are going to be mean passive aggressive to you or generally trying to be nice and just forget things. And so you can either give them the benefit of the doubt or just roll with it. Cause I mean, you're not going to be able to change other people's perspective or ideas or whatever, you know, by forcing them or talking to them or whatever. I mean, you probably could by talking to them, but if you're, your mental, at least, especially for trans people, their mental health, your mental health or their mental health is the most important thing that they need to take care of. So worry more about what's going to make you be happy in your situation, either cut them out of your life or have that conversation to get clarification. Well, my question is, are you tomboyish in your, like, are you tomboyish in what you wear? You know, like, so if you're tomboy, they're just, they're just, they're buying clothes for you. Like this sweater. Oh, I fear that this thing is going to get jacked the minute I have a girlfriend. 
I know that like I every like it's funny because with Vanessa when I wore it she's like that's a dope sweater I like that I was like you're gonna keep your hands right the fuck off of it and she's like no I'm not <laughs> um, you know and then it was funny because uh, the other girl that I, I kind of had a little bit with and when she saw it she's like I like that I was like you will stay away from it and she's like no and thank God she she never came over after that but like I that's what gets stolen from me is my sweaters and I like I genuinely fear it and, and this is a very this is a male sized sweater. Um, so like, okay, cool. But like, if the clothes fit, rock them the fuck out. That's what, oh, shut up, shut up, Google. Like rock it the fuck out if you can, you know, like that's what I would do. Um, but I, yeah, I'm like you, I wouldn't read too much into it. If it's just, oh, I'm sorry. You know, it, it just, that's what you're wearing. Okay, cool. But otherwise, Hey, fuck off. Really? Was that just the end of it there? Mine? Yeah. That's all yeah, I had okay. to say. Wow. Okay, so I found I found this post. I don't know who the fuck this is. Um Quima Quima Russo? Quima Russa, I think. I don't know. Like she's um I think uh who the fuck is, uh, Candace Owens, I think is her name. Okay. Uh she's 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 a um I'm gonna try to say this as, as politely as I can because I don't know. She's a black conservative. She's a black conservative very Owen, yes very attractive black woman yeah married okay. to a white guy i think he's british oh this he's not british like this dude's a supermodel and jacked here her I'll, husband no i'll, I'll send uh, yeah we're thinking of two two totally two totally different people here probably this is who i'm talking this is what i'm talking about here um it, it's an instagram thing queen marosa uh she, uh, I don't know who she is, but she's, she's a black lady and she's, uh, posing with a dude in a tuxedo with a, with a bow tie. And he actually looks really, really good. They, they both oh. look really, really good. Uh, he's this, J like, I can tell he's a Jack supermodel underneath. Like I'd mm -hmm. stand next to this dude. I'd pose with him. But there was a comment that I had no idea about that they had made. Where, oh, did I lose it? Oh, okay. Now I get it. Okay. You said Candace Owens. I thought yeah. you were talking about the okay yeah yeah so yeah Car candace owens vibes you met, you left that part out okay I, th I, was thrown off. I thought that they were talking about she was candace owens and that's her vibes no 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 no. candace owens is a black woman um right wing conservative married to a white guy so that's where i'm is guessing where the candace owens vibes is is she actually in government no no no, no. she's uh just kind of like a political pundit like um a talking Shapiro, head hero Knowles. um a little more right than Tim Pool and Rogan, but oh, in the okay. same vein, same circle. So she's a talking head, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, this, this 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 gentleman here had posted the fuck is a bed wench, and I had no idea about what a bed wench was because apparently it showed up in the comments, and uh, I'd never heard of it. Have you ever heard of a bed wench? No, I have not. So according to the aptly named uh, Captain Seaboard, Captain Seaboard here, because in the in the in the funny website that I run, uh, uh, it's called Nine Gag. If somebody doesn't know somebody, they'll ask for the sauce. And if you know mm -hmm. what you're looking at here, whether it be an anime, whether it be uh, a scientific research film that you need to rook, we we like we go Captain Sauce, and the captain will fly in and say, "Oh, this is so and so," and then fly fly off. So yeah. Captain Seaboard, wow, that was really bad. Sorry. Uh, it's a derogatory term directed at a black woman who are in relationships with white men. Typically, the word implies some sort of accusation of a black woman wanting a, wanting approval or privileges from a white guy. Since, um, I don't know, like, is it just me or, like, are, like, is the world just getting so nitpicky and so, like, it just... Like I like bed wench. Like, is that really that bad of a term? Like, if someone's like Jared, you're a bed wench. Be like, why? Yes, I'm getting laid constantly. Thank you. <laughs> that would have been my initial thought. Like something about you know bed, or you know laying, getting in, getting women into bed. Um, yeah. And that I thought it would be a British term because of the word wench. Uh, yeah, I never would have guessed that. But like. I, I think I misread it too because now that I actually read it out loud, it doesn't sound as spectacular or f as phenomenal as I thought in the middle of a phone call when I was reading it. But like, like when people make fun of people, like are they like it? 
Does it seem like they're just not even trying anymore to come up with some good shit to call somebody? Man, there's words being made up like on the hour, it seems like. So it just depends on your vernacular, who you hang out with and what they're saying. Yeah. I don't know. It just... a lot of, there's a lot of kids that um, like kids of my friends that basically just kind of speak in initials pretty much. Are you serious? What the fuck did they just say? Yeah, they like they'll they'll this whole conversation we're having would be X Y Z. So then B B Q, and then X Y Z B B S. You know, just ran like what the fuck are they talking about? Like, I, I guess it's either code or just particular slang from where they're at. I don't know. So just ignore it. It makes me think of the Nav Navajo code talkers, mm. where they were like, "Hey, nobody knows Navajo, so let's get a bunch of them, and and now there are secret code, and no one can break it." Mm -hmm. That'd be a good idea. So I have a I have a poll that I would like to jump to. I this this I know this this podcast is so random. I don't know like, is it flowing okay for you? Like I gotta check in it's, on it. It's flowing fine with me. I mean, okay. especially with the tangents too. All right, I, I I don't know. Maybe maybe it was just because like today, one of the girls in the the Zoom video was feeling really under the weather, and like it just it made me feel weird. I don't know, fuck her. Uh, so I I have a I have a poll for you here. Would you rather have world peace, pay yourself three million dollars, no world poverty, or that everyone gets cured of an illness? Again, peace. world peace, peace, three million dollars to yourself, mm -hmm. no world poverty. Or everyone gets cured of an illness. By the way, I'm digging the red on your fingers. I like it better than the black. It's a very glossy dark I, red. I, I very rarely have black. I haven't had black in a while. It may it might show up black on camera, but mm. it's usually like a, a sparkly red. Um, and these okay. are actually stickers that my sister put on my fingers when I was in Houston. Uh, they're not Color Street. They're Dashing Diva, which is... Basically the same thing, but cheaper. Um, I was going to mention go with the three million. You go with the three million. Yeah, because like illness, I don't care. I, I really wish Corona and COVID, whatever, would just wipe out as many people as possible as soon as possible instead of people like lollygagging with the whole mask thing. Um, because I really enjoyed the the um, lack of people on the road when I was traveling when first COVID first hit. So if we would just have everybody hurry up and die from it, I'd be so much happier. Um, I, poverty. I have what? a question that I already know your answer to. So thank you Go for ahead. that. I appreciate it. But, po <laughs> but, po but poverty? The poverty, um, I mean, there's there's still going to be um, classist, elitist, you know, the class system, elite system, whatever. You know, you're, you're, so even if you brought them in, everybody from poverty to middle class, now the middle class is going to be poor by just i mean there's always going to be a spectrum you can't get rid of the bottom end without having a top you know that you know, unless you make everyone equal then you can get rid of it oh shit okay um so the 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 new i i'm paycheck to paycheck is well i mean that could technically be considered poverty but that's the new poverty is that you're living paycheck to paycheck yeah versus always starving or you know whatever okay um i mean not even paycheck to paycheck he might have like a three month padding, you know, but still, you're still going to be at the bottom end. If you got rid of the poverty line where it's at now, just raise it. it and let's say specifically um, talk about how they're going to change or get rid of poverty, like how they're going to raise everybody up or get rid of it. Um, because if you give everyone a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or whatever, you know, they're going to go out and spend it. And then it's just going to raise inflation. Like with the, um, Stimulus checks a uh, year before last, whatever. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, everything. Oh, we got a twelve hundred dollar down payment deal or a eleven ninety nine uh, car for you. You know, just everything was getting jacked up to to eat up that money from other people when they could. So poverty you can't fix. The illness I don't care about. We're overpopulated anyways. And what was the third one? Uh, it was uh, world peace. Three million and world peace. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't care about world peace. I, I like the conflict. That way, it fucking drives a dollar in the in the markets. Well, I I picked uh, for everyone to be cured of an illness. Um, I picked that just because I'm sick and tired of the, I'm sick and tired of how 
well, you've already fucking said it, so it's already probably going to have a whole bunch of shit all over it anyways. Um, uh, the coronavirus. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I know you're not really supposed to mention it or say anything because then your videos get weirded out. But, like, I just wish that it would go the fuck away. Like, I'm 100% with you. Whether, like, like I'm, I, I need to get my booster. I need to get it. I, I, did, I need to talk to the VA. I need to get on it. I need to get it done. It's something I've been delaying just because I've been sitting at home. I'm like you. I don't want to fucking be out here. Like, I just, I like, I liked it when nobody else was out there. I don't like how, you know, everyone's not taking it seriously anymore. Like, it just, I would wish, I wish I could kind of, you know, crank that fast, you know, like in Fallout, do you want to wait for three years and see what happens? Yes, please, fast forward time three years. I would like to be in the future where either we are on, on Delta 9, you know, Omicron, very I 7, or fucking just half of the world is dead, you know? And, and like, yeah, um... But the other one that I would choose is is world peace because you get all that conflict. I, I mean, I get that it drives the dollar, but like I would really like to see a lot of nations just be able to come together and be like, let's not fucking kill our own people and be stupid. You know what I mean? Like I, I just there's there's so many things that I personally think world peace would fix. You know, like have you seen those before and after photos of like mm-hmm. Iran in 1979 versus like mm-hmm. the, like the 2000s? Like yeah, that's insane to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's what I think world peace would achieve where it's like, oh, we we could all be cohabitative. We would still be competitive in the in the market for money, but this way, you know, we're not like, oh, Ukraine is about to be invaded by Russia. Oh, no, like what? Oh my god, how's that going to affect everything? Like World War 3 and it's just like, I don't That's why I just play video games and talk on my stupid face here. Like <laughs> I mean, I think world peace is possible, just not achievable in our lifetime because in my mind what it would take to be there is for us to see ourselves as human beings or earthlings versus American or Wisconsin. What, what do you call it? What's the demonym for Wisconsin? Like a Wisconsinite, I think. Okay. So, so Wisconsinite, or she's uh, you know, Texan, Mexican, whatever. If you take that, you have to take that away that the, the statism or nationalism pride that most people have, or even city pride and get us to realize, Hey, we're all human. But you can't do that until we all are all the same. So homogenize the genes. So everyone looks the same. Everyone um, has the same or similar physical appearance, just different hairstyles or whatever. Um, One language. Then I think we could have a world peace. I don't see us having world peace any other way. There's absolutely no way I see us having world peace. I mean, it's good to have that pride. You're right. It does. Mm -hmm. It it is good to have a little bit of that pride, but like you're you're a hundred percent on board. Like, I mean, I don't care that you're like you're like, oh, I'm Texan or I'm I'm you know I'm a Nevadian. It's like, right, I'm from Wisconsin. I live where the you know where the weather hits, hurts my face. Okay, cool. You know, like, hey, let's 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 hang out. You know, like I don't see much. As, like it's weird because like I could talk to anybody who's like, oh, I'm a veteran too. And it's like that instant connection you feel mm-hmm. with people. And I, yeah, I, I see what you mean by that. Because when they would strip you all down, you were no longer Jared from Wisconsin. You were no longer Gallo from Nevada. You were. The maggot who was doing push-ups was just like everybody else. So, yep, fun. All right, uh, do you play Dungeons and Dragons at all? Yes, I do. Okay, so uh, th- this one was comes from the Dungeons and Dragons subreddit. This is Lineman Chuck. A shopkeeper has a hundred gold piece uh, is is charging you a hundred gold pieces for an item that is only worth fifty gold pieces, and then after you haggle it down to eighty gold pieces. Uh, the player character casts the spell sleep on him and then only pays 50 gold for the item. Is that chaotic good? Is that good, neutral, chaotic evil, evil, or chaotic evil? Oh, I, I forgot to mention on the last one, it was very divided. I think uh, No Poverty was the outlier where it, it was like really high up and then everything else was kind of on par with everything else. So... Huh. Yeah, my my apologies there. I I should have probably. So, oh yeah, the the poll. Yeah, 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 the poll. But yeah, so what do you what do you think this is? Is this uh you know, I mean, mm. he... either chaotic neutral or lawful evil would be my guess. Uh, oh, that's right. They didn't have they don't they don't have lawful evil in in here. But no, that that's a good point. Why is it lawful evil in your eyes? Because he's he so the the character the player character mm. knows the true value of the item and is not able to get what he needs because um what's the word essentially he knows the true value of, of what it is 
and he knows he's not going to be able to get it for what it, the true value is and he realizes or doesn't want to play pay for the inflation so um lawful evil is still he's still paying for it so he's still abiding or being lawful about it but he's not um what's the word he's not just outright stealing it because otherwise um either what is it neutral evil or pure evil depending on mm -hmm. who you ask but the neutral evil would just simply put him to sleep and take it um chaotic evil would put him to sleep maybe shank him and then take it just depending on whatever their mood is or whatever their motivation is like okay we put you to sleep so you won't feel this death or you will, you'll die a painless death but you're going to die because you try to fuck me so that would be the, the chaotic so by putting him to sleep and taking it or you're still paying him that also gives me that that chaotic um neutral because like yeah you know whatever i'm gonna let this guy make it instead of kick him in the balls or mm -hmm. um you know, taking something else besides it, or just outright stealing it and putting it to sleep. Yeah, I uh, I actually chose chaotic neutral. I, I could see where you would say lawful evil is the way to go. Uh, a lot of people chose uh, one point seven thousand people chose evil. Uh, lawful didn't make it because you can't have more than six options on a poll. Uh, but out of twelve thousand people, uh, one point seven thousand agreed with you. Six and a half thousand people agreed with me that it's chaotic neutral. Um, mm -hmm. and then, uh, neutral got a thousand chaotic, good, got a thousand 1.8 and then good and chaotic evil just kind of got spattered with the rest. Like nobody thought it was good, but like, I, I think you're, you're correct. Cause if, if I saw lawful evil on there, I would have chosen that instead of chaotic neutral because chaotic neutral is kind of, you do whatever you want to do. But I almost feel like whenever somebody chooses a chaotic neutral character that they typically are just chaotic evil, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. just what they are. That yeah, they're just, they're just trying because a lot of times campaigns won't let you be evil in any case. Like you either are neutral or good. So mm -hmm. you know you have to go with chaotic neutral, which I would prefer to have or be able to do chaotic evil because it's whatever you feel like doing, but what benefits you versus eh, whatever you're in the mood for that's on the level. You know. Yeah, and th this is why I led into that question that I asked you during the live stream. But then I was like, no, I should probably save that for the podcast and talk a little bit about that. So, but yeah, I, I, yeah, lawful evil seems a little bit better. But like, when it comes to inflation, like, isn't that kind of what drives the market? Is like, yeah, a PlayStation Five is technically supposed to be four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. but you know, you're buying it from a store for four hundred and fifty dollars because they have to get it and and put it up for sale and house it and keep it safe for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know, Joe Blow down the road who's charging you six hundred bucks, you know. That that's, you know, cause that's, that was something that I, that I, that I hate. That, that's something that I love and hate about the Facebook marketplace is that like, I offered a dude to buy his PlayStation four, not too long ago from him. I was like, Hey man, I'll give you this much. And he's like, ah, no. And I was like, all right, cool. And then I just went and you know, I could, and then I called up, uh, like, I think it was gaming, gaming generations or ja game stop one of the three. Cause they were within the, my driving radius that I wanted to go to. And they're mm -hmm. like, Oh yeah, we'll give it to this. And it was like only like 20 bucks more than he was charging for. But, like, I'd rather go there and get it because, you know, <laughs> because, like, he didn't come down to the price that I thought was was reasonable for it. And they're 20 bucks more reasonable, whereas he's like, no, I want the extra 50 for it. It's like, yeah, no, bud. So, but you ever you ever see something on the Facebook marketplace and they're like, oh, it's mint condition. You look at the photo and you're like, that's not even close to mint, big guy. Yeah, that, needs, yeah. that, need, that needs a deep clean. Yeah, this dude was like, I want 300 bucks. I was like, dude, I'll give you 200 for it. That does not look mint. Oh, it's been sitting in my car for a while. Yeah, that means it's not mint condition there, yeah. buddy. Ah, Getting people. jostled around full of dust and crumbs of whatever. Yeah, like it. Like I probably would have picked it up with a pair of gloves on. I would have picked it up with a pair of gloves, brought it home, <laughs> had some sani wipes ready and set to go with a screwdriver to deep clean that motherfucker with how bad it looked. You know? All right, next question here. What is an addiction that the world is just okay with? Hmm. What is an addiction that you think the world is just okay with? Like, they're they're cool with you being addicted to this. Probably sodas? Sugars? Really? Yeah, because, I mean, people don't, don't notice or see being overweight as... Uh, I mean, they'll see it as a food addiction, but, you know, being addicted to the sugars is going to keep you... You know, you're on that sugar crash, sugar. I mean, look at Starbucks. I mean, almost everything there is sugary or most of what's marketed is sugary. Um, added sugars on just about everything that we eat. Um, GMO stuff, 
what else? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of shit that doesn't just doesn't need sugar. Doesn't naturally have sugar. It gets added in either as a preservative or whatever. And you know, uh, I was gonna go alcohol. There's uh, a, a more. I, I now I'm kind of hesitant to say a more dangerous side effect of being at, like to to be addicted to alcohol. Um, I watched a I do I watched a a, a docu series about a dude who would like drink like a liter of vodka a day, like he would wake up have to get like a sip of vodka otherwise he'd be shanking like you know just like uh, Michael J Fox for the listeners, and like he would have <laughs> to like like his first three sips and he would immediately puke them right up. But it would calm him down because he got the alcohol in his system, like hmm. that's how wildly addicted he was. It was like it was bad. Like it, like I looked at it and I was like, "Holy shit!" And then like it's it's kind it's just kind of funny because like you have dudes that go to bars like every Friday Saturday night. Hmm. They're out at the bar. They're out drinking, getting a little hammered, driving home tipsy, and hmm. everyone's just like, "Oh, that's Timmy. He's at the bar." And it's like, yeah, every week Friday and Saturday night, Timmy puts the population of insert city at risk because of that sugar technically kind of does that but it's more of an individual thing you know yeah, but i would say, i would still say because you said the world and um middle east no alcohol so so you that would negate it there and then also and i would assume you speak of industrialized world not like third world countries or okay yeah um, people still in the jungle so yeah. um but even like the aborigines are, are being overweight because they're addicted to sugars versus, you know, like uh, we've, we've talked about before how Wisconsin and other places like Las Vegas and even just uh, Reno to an extent are okay with DUIs and drinking and driving or whatever. But other states that I've been in are really harsh on their um, punishments for them. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it as much of a problem because I know of, of just – uh, friends and family members that I know, say a hundred people that I know personally, maybe three have an alcohol problem that I'm aware of. And yeah. I would even extrapolate and probably say maybe another 20 have an alcohol problem, but everyone else that I know, um, at least 80 of them are overweight because either overeating or sugar. That's fair. Um, you obviously don't know about the, the background the 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 underground world in uh in the middle east like they do oh, I mean, yeah there's an underground i know yeah. that but in general i mean it's still yeah. you're not talking about a worldwide uh, addiction it, it, what would you call it 30 percent? I, I doubt it's more than 50 for the underground well alcohol and porn and all that in the middle east i, I mean from a lot of what and i'm going to use the word you just used extrapolated here from a lot of the, uh, you know, from like the people that I've I've learned about things through documentaries and stories that people have told me, it's almost like everyone kind of does it. But if you don't have the money over in the Middle East, you you don't you don't get as much. You know, they're just like, hey, come on, man, don't let people see you doing this. You're you're part of the powerful. It's a law that we have to have in place. So, mm -hmm. no, I, I I I get your point. I get your point on that. Um. So there was there there. Like I, I feel like this is just kind of a nifty little shoe in horn here thing that I I, I get to throw uh, at a little bit of shade at women here. Um, I almost <laughs> feel like I shouldn't even talk about it because I have like no place to talk about it. But a girl was rejected by a soldier, falsely claimed something on her, and uh, she is now getting five years in jail because of her false claim. Okay. Um, when people, and I mean, this, this isn't this isn't something maybe that I, I want to dive directly onto of falsifying a claim of something of that nature, but when people falsify things in the court of law or like just in society in general, you know, like where you watch a move or uh, someone's like holding up their phone and recording in their in their face of somebody going off, but they don't show the two minutes that lead up to it where they're complete dickheads and it's it's just like everything's spun on their head so when people mm -hmm. falsify things and just kind of general um how do you feel about some of these like super light punishments that people have been getting you know just like like in that in that aspect yeah it's so i'm going to not go on a tangent uh sure um, make assumptions because more often than not the ones that get the lighter sentences and what I've seen in media and whatnot is usually females get lighter sentences than males do in general. Mm -hmm. um, 
even if it's blatant false accusations, blatant um, crime. Um, statistically, if a white female, white male, black male, black female commit the exact same crime, exact same circumstances, um, fuck, what was that study? But essentially, they'd have jurors come in and go through the motions of the trial. And basically, the trial was reenacted from transcripts. And the conviction rate um, for the white people was lower. More often than not, they were not guilty. If they were guilty, their punishments were like on the minimum side. Blacks more often, or people of color, were more often than not guilty um, by over 80% and would get from at least middle of the road to the harshest sentence. So just on that as a study, which I need to find, but in any case, um, people getting lighter sentences, it's frustrating and annoying. And in my perfect world, what I would do is essentially have trials be like going through the motions kind of the same way like that, where there, the jurors wouldn't see it live, quote unquote, because whenever they'll say, oh, strike that from the record or, you know, the objection is, is uh, sustained and you tell the jurors, okay, you'll ignore everything you heard. You can't sell someone to unring a bell. So yeah. they would only get to hear what actually is allowed in the transcripts. And then the uh, plaintiff uh, would, you know, whoever is the actor for the plaintiff would be in some kind of like mass. So kind of like um, the, the mass singer or some uh, random a, a, thing. Yeah, like, like a blind yeah, You don't see the person, right? So you, yeah. you qualify the person based on their actions or, you know, their talent, not what they look like. So um, like that one girl, Susan Boyle, Mm -hmm. like she had an amazing voice but she couldn't get a career because she looked like a frumpy housewife and you know if they could do that and apply it to the court system i think it would be a lot fairer and, and better for everyone in general versus having an overpopulated privatized private uh prison system mm -hmm. i i have many ideas on how to reform the prison system very like i i i i have a i have a, a, a Oh my God. I can't fucking talk. Wow. I love, I love this. Like it's so bad. Cause I talk all day, every day. It's just sometimes uh, 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 fuck. I like, I have a really good idea to reform the prison system. Like I really do just make every drug uh, known available to man legal, you know, just mm -hmm. fuck it. Make it everything legal strike. Everybody's record it. Yeah. It's going to take some time to unwind everybody, but like, mm -hmm. just make everything legal and then uh, best of luck. Uh, you know, no longer is this, no longer is it privatized. And I think that we need to have standards across the board none of this per state bullshit none of this mm -hmm. you know per whatever you get a dy it's proven you get a di your first sentence is x you you murder somebody and it's proven that you murdered them with intent dude bye bye no no second chances no come around no come up or something like that you get a boop you're gone you know congratulations one thing i would change is um eyewitness testimony is not allowed because eyewitnesses cannot be reliable for giving that accurate or truth even if they have the best intentions of telling the truth or intend to tell the truth people can miss see things eyesight hearing everything the human being is not an accurate um i mean words if if there's like five if there's like five or more people that were like i saw jared yeah i saw him like Okay, maybe five people saw me doing it, right? But if it's just Timmy from across the road, it's like, I did see Jared down the street. It's like, yeah, well, how far away is he? Oh, he's 200 meters. Don't you wear glasses? Yeah, what's your prescription? Negative five on each? It's like, okay, maybe let's, you know, like, like let's cut that. But like the dude, the fact that my glasses are like, I think it's like, I think I'm a one in 0.75 in something. I'm negative one and negative 0.75 in either eye. Like even that would disqualify me for a lot of things because I technically don't have perfect vision and, and you're right, even with perfect vision, but like, that's, that's one of the things where like, I know it almost gets to be like that Tom Cruise movie where uh minority report. There we go. That's that movie. Yeah. 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 That's almost kind of like that. That would have to be a thing, you know? Um, I, I kind of feel bad for those kids though. Kind of feel bad for the, the twin or the, the triplets that are, mm. you remember what that movie's about? Yeah, where the triplets could, uh, the precogs, they could the, see the future yeah. and would say, oh, yeah, this person needs to go to jail for whatever. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that was kind of my thoughts. I, I just think everything needs to be standardized, you know? And, like, 
like I, I like that because because I always thought about like what would I do if I had a business you know to stay away from those uh, what's it called because uh, you know how people are like oh you didn't hire me because of blah 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 so like my interview would literally be like okay it's like a, it's a one way mirror on either side and then mm-hmm. you talk into a microphone and that microphone just totally distorts your voice so every time someone talks I always hear the one tone and I can't tell so all I can go based off of is these are your credentials I don't know your name I don't know your age I don't know anything all I know is this is what you say you can do and I talk to you through the through the mirror and that's all I get you are Canada A B C and D you know cuz like that's the, that's the one thing that I it's so weird cuz I fear all that nonsense cuz it's like like choose the best candidate choose the best candidate and it's like yeah well the best candidate usually typically turns out to be this type of person for this job and it's it's not that we're we're being um, discriminatory. It's just that this type of person typically works out to be that best person. Mm-hmm. The the only downside of that would be um, grammar, ebonics, and what's the other one? Um, enunciation. Because even even through um, a distorted voice or robotic voice, you would still you still can't hide. Yeah, I'm going to ask them. You know, you, the the way they pronounce words or say words. And not they, whatever particular group, but just using um, different you, tones. Because I mean, yeah. you could even have, I have friends that are Latino that quote unquote talk black. And if you hear them on the phone, you would assume they're a black person. You see them in person, like, oh shit, you know? So, anyways. Do you, I'm, I'm, this is out of sheer genuine curiosity. So please, do you have to say it that way? Latino? Say what? Do you have to? I don't. Okay. Do you do that? It's just first? what I'm used to, just used to because okay. okay. For me, it it feels weird to use Spanish words with an English accent like tortilla or tortilla or <laughs> Latino. Like it just sounds wrong to me. So because it sounds wrong in my head, I say it that way or in Spanish. Whereas if someone else says it, I don't expect anyone else to be able to say Latino correctly or with a Spanish inflection, especially if they're not um, exposed to it at all. You'd hate me at Walmart. Why, yes, I will grab a tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Walmart accused of having sexist truck driver uniforms. Uh, so, the uniforms in Walmart requires its truck drivers to wear... Uh, uh, to wear... What the fuck? The, uniform, the uniforms Walmart requires its truck drivers to wear amount to, quote... Blatant, blatant sex discrimination, end quote, against female workers because they only fit male body, uh, male bodies, the lawsuit alleges. Um, I did actually read a little bit more into it. Uh, basically, during when the pandemic hit and Walmart and a lot of other companies needed to like start shipping more and more and more and more, um, they had a huge hiring boom. And the typical truck drivers, and this was a perfect segue, what is a typical truck driver, Gallo? fucking overweight guy in his 30s or 40s yeah and and so a lot of women t- took it up as, as driving and uh she's actually been fitted for a pair of pants uh she says that she has to buy her own shirt but my question is if you're a truck driver do you, like you wet you have to wear your shirt for like two minutes a day like two minutes you know what i mean like if if they're like jared i need you to take your truck go to nevada pick up some groceries and then haul it back up to here to Wisconsin and we need it in like four days. Do they are like, do they have a camera in my cab where they're watching me, you know, banging out to Britney Spears? Like hit me baby one more time. Like, are they really watching that shit? Are they like, you're not, you're uh, that's very good. Britney Spears, but you're not wearing your polo, man. Like really? Are they doing? I, I, I did a, I didn't know that the truck drivers had to wear a uniform. I mean, the only truck drivers I know would be like uh, FedEx, uh, UPS, and them. I didn't realize Walmart truck drivers had to wear a uniform. And even if they did, so do the women want them to be form-fitting? I'm guessing. Is that the thing? Like, they don't they don't like it being baggy? I'm guessing that's what they're going for, yeah. The, the, article, <laughs> the article didn't really go too much into it other than Walmart had made a comment. They're like, yeah, we had to catch up. So we start... They finally fit, they got female fitted pants for their female drivers, but she had to go out and buy a t-shirt or a few t-shirts to be able to, you know, like wear a, a correct-ish uniform and Walmart wouldn't reimburse her. So she got pissed off about it. Okay. That I can, I can see, like, let's say, um, 
all they had were triple XLs and she's a petite little five foot two woman. She needs a small or extra mm-hmm. small or whatever she needs that I can see that it's the size, not the fit. But if it's, if they're talking about fit as far as size, then yeah. But especially that she, they won't reimburse her because I, I would imagine it would be unsafe to drive with the triple XL shirt where the sleeves are way out here that you have to roll them up. Mm. And it affects either your steering or whatever reaction time. So having properly fitted clothes would work better, I guess. I don't know. My my assumption is that Walmart was like, "Hey, you're uh, you're an XL in men's," is is what it was. Like, "Hey, you're a large in men's, or you're an XL in men's, or, or whatever size in men's you are." And that's what the uniform was that they gave her. But she wanted a female size clothing. That's what I gathered from the the, the article. Went very little into detail about anything it was one of those very preliminary like oh we just heard about this let's get an article out um that's the way that i kind of view it because it's like okay you're getting fitted with men's clothing like okay yeah like you you could fit in a men's clothing you can get proper sizes you know mm-hmm. but then again you also have to remember they said that they hired like two thousand drivers at the start of the pandemic no company is ready to hire two thousand individuals no matter how many outlets they have and how many backups they have it took me four weeks to get my uniforms uh, and we were a year into the pandemic and everything was more or less kind of, we were back on par for everything normal when I was working at the cheese factory. Well, even pre pandemic, when I started with Tesla, um, I mean, I'm a XL shirt, 36, 34 pants. And, um, I forget you get issued like three and two or five of one and two of the other, I forget what it was, but whatever I was issued, they were short, like three or four on one thing and one of the other. So I had like a quote unquote credit and whenever they come in then they, okay, here, here's your stuff. So, I mean, even pre pandemic stuff, not everyone's always stocked to have all the sizes for everyone that could possibly get a job in a place. And usually they're like, Hey, just wear this, wear this as a Mm -hmm. replacement until you get there. Like a white t-shirt and jeans. Everyone's got a, a typical outfit that they can wear. You know, I'm pretty sure Walmart was like, you have to wear a blue polo and this and that and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, I'm sure they were like, just just wear something close to this as a replacement. And then she probably decided to go out on her own and get something that was to her form fitting. And she wanted to be reimbursed for it. That, that You're getting a uniform. If they tell me they're like, hey, uniform of the day is a t-shirt and pants. I'm like, can you be a little bit more elaborate? Yeah, just just something plain Jane. I come in with just my regular jeans and a, and a black and or blue or white t-shirt that's what they told me to wear that's what i got this is what you're getting Mm -hmm. i'm not going to ask to be reimbursed to go out and buy a whole wardrobe because they're back ordered or or i have to wear like a a 5xl women's shirt because that's all they had i'll rock that shit i just i think it's frivolous you know what i mean i i I think it's a little weird that that you unless mm -hmm. well if walmart's saying hey you have to have a navy blue shirt that fits or just a navy blue polo or whatever and the ones that she has like i said don't fit she had to get one that was fit that not fitted like form fitting but just the proper sizing because Mm. females are smaller and they won't reimburse her then that i can see okay yeah but if it's because they wanted a form fitting accentuating for the female body then okay that you're pushing it if you if you have the shirts that were close enough of a fit that would be my like really are you just being a little twat waffle over for this yeah um Oh, here it is from CBS. This is the actual. I hate that where it's like, do you want to open it in the in 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 an app you have or? Uh... So yeah, the uniforms Walmart requires are quote blatant sexist in a class action suit filed Tuesday in Alabama. Walmart truck driver so and so said her illegal, her ill-fitting driver uniform led her to buy garments that closely resembled the retailer's mandatory clothing, uh, according to court documents. Webb, who joined Walmart in July of 2020. Uh, as a delivery driver asked to be reimbursed for the clothes, but the company declined uh, the com- the complaint. This requirement was denied by her supervisors, and she was told that if she was reimbursed, Walmart had to do- to reimburse everybody. Uh, she her suit alleges or argues that Walmart is breaking federal law by not offering uniforms that properly fit women. Female drivers mm-hmm. are therefore required to either suffer discomfort or purchase and launder their own pants uh, out of their own pocket with no option for reimbursement in order to fulfill the Walmart's employment requirements. So yeah, they don't have female fitted clothes, and so she's just complaining that she has to wear men's clothes, which is not what kind yeah, of we were talking. Yeah. But then why do women always steal my goddamn hoodies? 
<laughs> Maybe they just want to have you close to them and have that smell on them so they know, you know, they feel My loved. scent is not pretty. <clears throat> you never know. Some girls are attracted to the pheromones. Uh, the pheromones smell, and the pheromones need to shower. All right. <laughs> so, uh, last, last thing I want to touch on, because I... I know, I know, I, I kind of want to keep this one down a little bit here, um, and I also want to go and play a game that I've been waiting to play for a little bit here. Do you know who Leah Thomas is? Mm. Is she the girlfriend from uh, Back to the Future? Leah Thomas. No, that's is, Leah Thompson. That's Leah yeah, Thompson. Leah, no. Leah Tom, sorry, Leah Thomas controversy leads women's sports advocates to speak out against the NCAA. "Quote: It's about fairness." Um, so Leah Thomas is um well uh, the best way that i can put it is she is a transgender swimmer who used to be on the men's swim team and is now on the women's swim team and okay. she is breaking all kinds of records like oh. yeah okay oh. go ahead sorry no you, you, oh. no i i know Ooh. that is a handsome woman uh, yeah i know right oh Okay, sorry. No, I, I know. She, like, like I don't know how, like, have you seen that strong woman thing with South Park? Mm, I haven't seen South Park since, like, the uh, chef died. No, oh, uh, wow. I, 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 yeah, no, sorry. Okay, um, so here, here's kind of the thing. Um, they did a, they did an episode, because PC Principal gets uh, uh, a girlfriend who is, a, a strong woman is her name. Her name is actual strong woman because she's supposed to play a strong independent woman or whatever, and <laughs> they they're they're taking on the a women's like champion thing where it's like a, a triathlete or what. Uh, you ever seen the movie The Ringer with Johnny Knoxville? Mm -hmm. Basically, they're doing that, but for a women's tournament or something like that. Um, but it's not for special education. It's it's for just like a yep. women's uh, thing. Most points wins. Well, they did. Um, oh God, who's who's the it, I think it's Ric Flair. No, Macho Man Randy Savage. They have yeah. a character who is basically Macho Man Randy Savage. And he transitioned to be a woman like two weeks earlier. And he is now a woman and part of the tournament. And blows everybody out of the water. Right. But Strong Woman is like, I, I have to respect her because she is trans. Um, and I, I was kind of looking. And this, this is kind of where I wanted to talk about things. Because she recently set school records in the 200 meter freestyle, 500 and 500 meter freestyle in November. This past weekend, the record break, uh, the record breaking stretch continued as she set another school record in the 1,650 meter freestyle. Her teammate Anna Kalandes finished in second place, over 38 seconds behind her. Now, for those of you who don't know much about races. Um, if you are in a 10 second deficit, that could take you laps to catch up to somebody. Uh, you, you know, it could take you laps to close a 10 second deficit A 30, a 30 plus second deficit. You might as well just say I'm competing for second place now. A am I mistaken on that guy? No, I, I would concur. I would, I would agree with that. Um, yeah, that's, are you biding your time to say what you want to say? Or are you trying to bite your tongue? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this in, in uh, like I'm I, I think it's it's mm -hmm. totally unfair to have uh, trans male to female compete in female sports um, just because physiologically men are generally stronger and better at sports in general blanket statement regardless of um, professional or athleticism levels. Um, what was it? There was, I think it was the Australian women's soccer team played against fifth graders and lost. 15 year olds. 15 year olds. Yeah. 15 yeah, year -olds, they lost, you, you uh, saw that seven to one, I think is what it was. Yeah. And, and we're talking about pubescent boys competing against adult women and they are physiologically superior. I'm not talking about uh, as far as the sexes go, just physical appearance, physical capabilities, they were superior. They just showed it. And they weren't, these weren't even um, like varsity level 
boys. These were just boys, a boys team. I mean, it was varsity. I don't know. I think but... it, what I took away from it was this was a, a team, a, a 15 year old boys team that just was it, like not many people that were like, I want to be a career soccer player. But it was just the guys that played for one of the local high schools playing mm-hmm. against the women's USA national team that won gold in the fucking Olympics. Australia. Or Australia. Australian sorry. Team. Yeah. But yeah, like they're on par with like the, the they compete in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Like that just should tell you something right there. I mean, just looking at Olympic records, comparing male to female records, I mean, the top and, and even what's his name? Um oh, you saying Bolt? No, 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 no. Um, tennis player, uh, McEnroe. McEnroe. Um, he made a comment of something like, you know, Serena Williams, if she played versus men, she wouldn't be ranked number one. She'd be in like the seven or six hundreds because, you know, she couldn't compete against Federer. She couldn't compete against others. And, um, or I think it was, no, no. I think he said something like she'd be like in the top hundred, but she wouldn't be in the top 10 if she played against men. And, you know, people were trying to do the whole Billy King comparison. But then again, the Billy King um, battle of the sexes tennis game in the 60s or 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Um, that was a 50 year old man past his prime playing against a female in her prime. And of course, he was cocky and talking shit the whole time, blah, 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 blah. He lost her. So then that just boosted the whole thing. Oh, yeah, women are capable. Women can do this. But he wasn't a prime player, whoever that guy was. I forget his name. Yeah. And then they tried to get McEnroe to apologize and take it back. He's like, no, I'm not, because physiologically, this is a truth. And then they try to say, well, could you beat her? It's like, no, I couldn't beat her. I'd be like in the 700th place. I could not, he like McEnroe could not possibly beat Serena Williams, but the top males in tennis could beat Serena Williams. Um, yeah, I, th- and, I think you, know, you were, I think what he said was like, the no, she would have a tough time to beat number 100 or something like that. Like the 100th yeah. place guy would still be able to beat her quite relatively mm-hmm. easily or something like that. Yeah, because her, her serve is like an average male serve. You know, it, you know it, it, it fucking scares the shit out of other women because she can do like a 90 mile plus serve. I forget what it is. But most of the males can do 100 plus. So, you know, that's a 10 mile an hour. And sure, that might not seem like a lot. But when you're talking about over 50 miles an hour that's a hard fast hitting ball no matter what but anyways mm. yeah i i like i hate like i okay it, you're, you're not trans you are either male or female i don't care what you are but like the biggest thing is is like you are 100 percent correct you could take somebody like because like we were talking earlier in the show about the, the the girls that i've seen on those trans pages was like oh i've been on it for three years and i look so feminine blah 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 I'd be like, okay, like maybe then, yeah, let's go ahead and let you compete. You know, where you are literally been on this, you, your body has cycled through it. You are now pretty much for all intents and purposes, you know, that your body is now regulated at what it should technically be. Maybe then let's go ahead and see what happens. But we need to do a lot of trials, a lot of trials mm-hmm. and tribulation. I, I mean, because like, it doesn't look like she transitioned all that long ago. You know, no, it, it to me it just looked like a male with long hair and budding boobs, like just overweight and had man boobs. Um, and you know, to me that I get, you know, and I I don't want to get your channel or whatever in trouble, but I don't you know, care. fucking come at me, at me, cochino chingon, anywhere you want to find me, whatever you want. But uh, I don't think that male to female trans should compete in female sports there uh, did you watch that one or where, have their own class where it's just trans yeah. females to be in whatever like have to trans olympics like that's what there's special what, olympics why can't we have trans olympics wasn't it cyborg the ufc women's fighter that was trans that decided not to come out and like tell everybody about it after she had like destroyed like three or four women like obliterated them I missed that one. Missed that one, maybe? Like the only cyborg I'm thinking of is from American Gladiators back in uh, the 90s. So That that explains a lot about the women I'm attracted to now. I grew- <laughs> American Gladiator way back in the day. I remember oh. looking at somebody. I was like, gosh, she is so cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now muscles make sense whenever you you're apply to that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm like, damn. Yeah, like those like that's I grew up on that. Like that okay. there's a lot of shit that I grew up on where I'm like, wow, that's a woman. I was like, okay, yeah, like 
Like, like it was always funny because like I, you'd see a woman uh, gladiator substitute in with some of the normal men and and like I mean that was a have you ever seen that one? Because I think there was like a one or two episodes if I maybe am remembering this correctly where one of the females had to uh, get in there and fight one of the regular males because one of the guys was like KO'd or something like that or I I don't know like I I, I mean I'm sure it might have <laughs> happened because I mean they they would kind of like alternate sometimes too where yeah. males would be against the females the, the the female players or contestants and you know whatever it other than like i think joust was the only one that was always same sex yeah but joust anyways. that that was so cool the joust up there you're, you're like 20 feet in the air and you, like that i mean i mean you knew you were gonna get caught by the safety harness but that still added a bit like all right that, okay sorry sorry my apologies i just remembering Taking a trip yeah. down memory lane. They they brought it back for a little bit. Yeah, like ten years ago, give or take. Really, was like it that, that long? I don't know. I I mean, I'm in my forties, so you know, fucking. I feel like the nineties was like fucking eight years ago. So. I know, right? Yeah, where I'm like, yeah, because like it was funny. I was I was scrolling through one of those not safe for work reds, and she's like, oh, what a two thousand two girl. And I'm like, you're not allowed to post on here. Oh, oh that's right. You know, I'm like, you're 20. I was like, shit. It's like, wow. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. This, this is what you get for a last minute episode again. I know. It, it, <laughs> it has a very weird flow to it. I feel like it was very weird. Um, so, I, I, I do want to thank Gaio because uh, for those of you who are watching the episode uh, on the YouTubes, this is a sure sm78b microphone that he gifted me so thank you sir for this i wanted to say thank you very much as well as le dynamite um i'm going to figure out how to get that to work a little bit more properly in the next coming weeks here and we're going to see how well that turns over because i might actually sound like a real radio host for a change um and not have to talk through this uh goofy little microphone so guile thank you for saving my ass just like i helped you out last night no problem, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, yeah, this has been fun. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have a title yet? I'm just going to call it the Reddit episode. Sounds good. That just works. random Reddit stuff. Dude, I would, I'd like, I'm not going to lie. If I wasn't so, like, I probably would have done the podcast actually on Saturday and released it late Saturday just because of, like, I was just afraid to do it alone. I don't know. Like, I just, I got afraid to do it alone because I've had guests and I don't want, like, I don't know how much people really like just my dumb face talking at them, you know? I don't know. I mean, at the same time, not everybody's watching the YouTube. They're only listening to the podcast. And and I get this. I, I understand the, the idea because I've been having a lot of guests myself where I don't even remember the last time I had a solo episode. And so the other day I tried to do a live stream to kind of like just record myself. I was like, man, I just kind of sound stupid because I got nowhere I'm going. I don't even have not even an outline. So whatever. That's uh, before I started getting guests. If you listen to those episodes, you can tell I have a glimmer of where I want to start with, and then it just immediately goes off the rails and it never gets back on track. Like, well, the ones I listened to were the ones where you're like reporting, uh, like gaming news. So that one kind of like seemed like it had a coherent pattern, but I didn't follow between that solo and then the guest ones. I just kind of like, like fell into the guest ones that I was listening to. Yeah, the uh, the solo ones where I talk about gaming news is me five minutes before I load up Googling gaming news and then clicking on a couple articles and go, oh, this looks good. Let's go and dive into it. <laughs> I I was very before I started having get like I've, I've been told that like it's kind of like it's kind of gone up a little bit when I when I finally started getting guests and really doing my homework on some people and actually like understanding them like the I, I feel like the only fans episodes are really, really good because I like actually deep dive on people's. Like the one with Oni Girl, where I talked about her comic, and hopefully I can get her to come back on with her beautifully British boyfriend. Um, like, I had it scripted out. I knew what I wanted to talk about. I knew where things were leading, and I knew the subject matter. And it felt almost like it was like it was just a conversation and, and not really, you know, like I was interviewing her. So, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. You just sit there quietly after I say something, and it, it, oh, it makes me, me react. I don't know. I it makes me feel bad. Looked, I thought you were like 
thinking of something to say. So I was like, okay, he's going to say something. <laughs> You're just sitting there and like, I finished my sentence and I'm like, oh, this is the natural ending point. Great. He's not feeling it. Like, oh, this <laughs> no, really no, sucks. Because no. <laughs> just... you turn to the side. You're like, da, 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 da. Hmm. And it looked like, hmm, what do I want to say? <laughs> Oh, and he turned back <laughs> because okay, I felt like it was failing. I'm just sitting here, and you're just like looking like a little, a little, a little fairy sitting on a, a flower, waiting for for their chance to say something. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I'm like, also, oh, I've been, I've been doing, I've been doing the pee pee dance. You haven't noticed, but I've been doing oh, pee pee dance for. I don't oh, know, that's what it is, dude. Yeah. You should just told me so I could pause. You could, I could have just paused. Oh my god, Gaio, where can we fucking find you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram. TikTok as Gochino Chingon. It's a Spanish word. Just sound it out. It's the way it sounds. Uh, my podcast is Sucias are my favorite. It is totally not safe for work. I talk about kink, BDSM, crazy random stuff because I'm a sex addict, uh, a recovering sex addict or recovering intercourse addict. And my most recent episode, I had a porn star. So uh, check it out. We talk about the lifestyle, which is swingers. So nice and 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 stay tuned possibly for one where i show up and talk a little bit about some things that nobody knows about so maybe if that one yeah. ever airs anyways oh no it'll be out monday so oh well look at that so you get to learn something yeah. on monday if you find his his podcast which i will yeah, link so you to. find me yeah and then you're gonna have to go back and watch youtube to get a little joke that we were talking about basically watching diablo um, actually it wasn't a joke it was a little sad moment That's so sad if, moment. if you want to hear more about Jared's heart breaking. Um, you can hear what made him break his heart just a little bit um, last week while we were playing Diablo. So it's uh, what is that called? Inception. We gotta go another layer deeper, right? <laughs> so that's three layers. We gotta go. We gotta listen to this episode on Sunday. Listen to my episode on Monday. Oh no, no, you gotta listen to Sunday's Saturday's episode. This episode is coming out Saturday. Yep, tomorrow. You gotta go back and watch the YouTube on Parrot. Gaming Productions. Para Gaming Productions, a live episode where we did right. Diablo 3. And then on Monday, you can hear about the heartbreak in my voice. Yeah. What what broke his heart? Yeah. If you do, if you make the trifecta and comment on this video that you hit the trifecta, bless your heart. I will send you an Amazon gift card. What? So, but you, ha you have to make mention as to what broke my heart, what moment it was. So text somebody to <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah no if I get a random message in like the next two days I'm gonna know it was you so no no, no it won't be it won't be me it'll be it'll be in the comments in the YouTube okay all right whatever because well, someone's gonna do that I, I'm sure you have a stalker out there I I hope I do have a sucker that'd be greatly appreciated all right well Guile I love your face I'm gonna let you go to the bathroom and to everybody out know. there what is it that you always say. <laughs> You're going to copy me again? Fuck yeah, I am. Uh, it was, uh, I love you, you're worthy of it. Till next time, vessels or kisses. Cause... I love you, you're worth it. And kisses. <laughs> <laughs>